Okay, so this is the second node, and as you can see, it's gone to a root login. Uh, most of the activity that you will see on the screen will happen on the first node. Okay. The default password is OVS root that comes factory packaged. And I just fired up the build cluster.sh file. Uh, and while that's running, I need to open up another another need to establish another SSH session. Okay, let me switch the so I've established another SSH session and what I'm doing is by looking at the progress dash rack OVM dot op file I can monitor the progress of build cluster. This process should take approximately twenty to twenty five minutes to complete. And while that's going on, we're going to give you an overview of Oracle VM and its various components, its different components. So I can I can keep running this file, I can keep viewing this file, and it is being updated as we speak. And we can also look at the status. of build cluster while it's running. Okay, so what this is doing essentially is setting up your entire two node rack cluster from scratch. It's installing your great infrastructure as you can see. It will install uh, a, bare, a bare bones small database called ORCL. Uh, to get you up and going. Uh, it will do a a anything and everything and as you can see it really takes out the pain out of creating a rack cluster. It All your OS setup, uh, everything and anything that you need to do to set up Oracle Rack is automatically being done by running this one single shell script. Okay, And it's 100 percent supported by Oracle so you can actually use this and attach physical ASM devices to
to your rack cluster. However, we created a total of five devices. There is no limitation on the amount of ASM device. All you have to do is modify the params uh, .ini file that comes shipped with build cluster and you can use as many uh, devices and name them however you want to name them. So really takes out the pain out of the whole process. Okay, so while this is running, it's going to take about 20 minutes or so. Let's talk about Oracle VM. So this, this PowerPoint is basically uh, part of a series of uh, webinars that I delivered in November and December of last year, uh, concentrating on Oracle VM. I'm sorry? Sayed? Okay. So Oracle VM. Can you hear me? Sorry, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, because it seems your uh, screen uh, we can't see anything. Your screen stuck as the login style. Machine two. Okay, I think you're having a problem with your connection, Sayed. If you can hear me, because your voice is also broken. So. Jeremy, can you hear me fine? Can you see the screen? Yeah, I can hear you and see the screen fine, but Syed's voice was very broken up. It just sounded like the telephone connection uh, might have a problem. Have okay. A problem. So let's talk about Oracle VM. Oracle VM is based on Zen. Uh, Zen was basically started at the University of Cambridge as a college project, and it quickly became very popular. It's the dominant in industry industry leading platform for virtualization in the cloud computing world. It is used as the platform of choice by Amazon, which is the dominant cloud computing leader. Uh, best of all, it's 100% free. You only pay for support if you choose to get it. Uh, for all uh, current purposes of strategy and direction, Oracle VM forms the foundation stone of Oracle's current cloud computing strategy. So if you look at any of their latest and greatest uh, presentation slides in the red stack, as I describe it, you will see a virtualization layer at the very bottom, which basically uh, is made up of Oracle VM. All key Oracle product offerings are certified and supported with Oracle VM, uh, whether it's WebLogic, uh, whether it's grid control, whether it's database, applications, all of their products are certified and supported on Oracle VM. And they factory package and ship uh, templates, Oracle VM templates, for all key product offerings today as we speak. Oracle VM is made up of two components, which is the virtualization component and the management component. Now, Jeremy asked me a question that, do I use command line utilities? And the answer was yes. Now, theoretically, you can just live, if you want to, you can just live with creating an Oracle VM server machine and have no Oracle VM manager. Of course, that would make your life difficult because you'll have to do everything on command line, finding switches to commands. It comes with a rich and dense set of command line utilities. Everything and anything that you can do with the Oracle VM manager in the GUI portion you can also do in Oracle VM server using command line. Uh, for example, XM uh, utility has a rich and dense set of uh, command line offerings. And some of them are actually used by Oracle VM manager in the background to perform its different functions. Oracle VM is also augmented with the Oracle assembly builder and the template builder. Uh, these are great neat little uh, tools that Oracle has come up with in the last year or so. It supports, uh, Oracle VM supports three families of operating systems, which are Linux, Solaris, and, and Windows. Uh, Oracle VM, which is based on Zen, is very fast. It's, 
it definitely performs, as we will see in some of the later slides, uh, the, some of the benchmarks. Now, what is, what is virtualization? Virtualization has been around since the 60s under different names. Uh, essentially, a virtual machine monitor, or a hypervisor as it's popularly known, is responsible, acts as a layer between your physical bare metal hardware and your emulated guest machines. And it is responsible for the coordination, the allocation, and so on and so forth of different resources such as memory, I.O., C CPU, uh, etc., to your guest machines from the bare metal physical hardware. Now, what, how it achieves that is, I'm jumping through a couple of slides here, is it has a special hypercall ABI, uh, or an application binary interface that it uses for this coordination and allocation of resource between the guest VMs or the DOM use. Uh, both terms are interchangeably used. Two types of hypervisors, type 1 and type 2. Main difference between them is type 1 sits on bare metal hardware, such as, as Jeremy mentioned, VMware ESX, Microsoft Hyper-V, Zen, which is Oracle VM, uh, and hosted hypervisors, which actually sit. Uh, now, the first one, type 1, actually is the lowest lever, lowest layer, I'm sorry, lowest layer of the software stack. Type 2 is the hosted hypervisor, which is Oracle VM VirtualBox, something we demonstrated last week when we set up a two-node rack cluster on Oracle VM VirtualBox. Another example is VMware Server or VMware Player. So, What's, what, is, what are the key benefits, what are the advantages, what are the pros for using virtualization within your data center, within your IT infrastructure? Primarily, the, the key, the main benefit, the main advantage that's been identified in the industry is agility. It's rapid deployment. As you saw, we are, as, as, you, as you saw today, what we are doing right now is setting up a two-node rack cluster without going through the manual processes. It's essentially what we're doing is we're replicating a binary image. We're replicating the entire binary image, the entire stack, which has your OS. It has your uh, grid infrastructure on top. It has your Oracle database homes. It has your Oracle database, the whole nine yards. You can save them as templates or classes, if you will, and you can rapidly deploy them with a few clicks. Just want to quickly show you the progress that we're making on Bill Cluster. So it's basically doing its thing. It's going ahead and installing the whole nine yards. As you saw, as you can see, it just started up the CSS daemon. And it was terminated as well, which is normal. By the way, Tariq, somebody asked, uh, where do you run the build cluster script from? Is that that's run um, at the server, not at, at the node level? Or no, 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 that's run on the node, right? I'm sorry, not on the server. Yes, it's run on node one, actually. It's run on only one single node, the very first node of the cluster. Uh, and it can, the buildcluster.sh file can be found in the forward slash u01 forward slash rack OVM directory that's packaged, factory packaged as part of the rack OVM templates. So 